That is the entirety of most Pikachu Libre players' neutrals. It's very cute. Yo, what's up, everybody? This is a video dedicated to counterattacks once again. You can see this as the trilogy because I've made two videos of this topic on the past, talking about what makes counters so good and why they. Some people would be like, are they broken or whatever? And some of the great ones that you'll see. One of them being actually Libre's right here. Today's video is how to deal with counterattacks, and there's a lot that you can do to actually grow accustomed to seeing opponents just charge a frame like whatever 40 move in your face and dealing with it. Because a lot of time players will think, oh, that's so scary. I'm just to hold my block. I think the very important thing to say here is that most counterattacks are plus when fully charged on block. There's a few exceptions. I think Machamps is one of them. For the most part, you are being forced to block a counterattack like this. You are most likely going to be minus and you could lose the next follow-up thinking you could press a button either way or you just want to risk something. For example, if your pack's against the wall and typically a lot of characters would like to do counterattacks on Oki opportunities. I outranged it and I was faster than her, so I was able to hit her with my own 2Y. This video will explain a lot on how to deal with counterattacks, mostly ways you would know how to deal with fighting against someone who's just charging it in your face. This requires you to just be a little, little fearless. You can be scared of these pretty easily, like I mentioned, but it's not as scary as you might think, depending on what you do. First off, we're getting away from Libre because Libre's foot tapping noise is bothering me. Well, the first thing you need to know when you're dealing with counterattacks is that all you need to do is just grab them. It's just that simple, honestly, and end the video right now. For that unfunny joke, I will give you guys some actual advice. Uh, you can also pierce them. That's another thing you can do. Now we can end the video. <laughs> Those are the two ways you would typically beat counterattacks when you're guessing. You can use these options for reactions as well. Now some actual advice before I run this joke into the ground, but... For counterattacks, basic information you really need to know is that when you hit a counterattack, it doesn't always mean you're going to lose all the time. That was a bad example. When you do something like a quick move in the middle of them charging an attack and they keep charging, you're most likely going to be safe if you just block on time. But also, at the very beginning of a counterattack, there's a bit of startup that each character goes through before the attack comes out. Just like a normal move. But usually when a character is charging it, as soon as they're like over with a certain pose, then they can attack right away. For example, let me just get to a regular counterattack right here. And you can see that like, you know, Shamichi goes like this before charging up. All the characters have something like that where they have to go through that and they just can't release it right away. So for cases like that, you can typically, if you attack right then and there, and Shamichi is pretty quick if I recall for a counterattack, you can still be able to block on time. So that's just basic information for situational awareness when it comes to fighting against characters who will probably release their counterattacks right away. Because most players will most definitely release their counterattacks as soon as they see you hit them. And a lot of the time that could be from either safe jumps like people coming in with a JY or like what I did with a 2Y right here with Sceptile, you can most of the time be able to block in time. It's also good to note that when you are dealing with counterattacks, that uncharged counterattacks don't pierce, but the fully charged ones do. So there is some risk versus reward for what I'm about to show in that if you do end up accidentally hitting them and you do have time, you're actually able to counter yourself and be able to punish them. Now in situations like this, you could also just dash cancel. That does a lot more damage. Or... Well, Shamichi recovers pretty quickly, but a lot of characters who recover more slowly with their counters and have faster dashes like Sceptiles might be able to get a full combo off of it even. But a lot of the time it is a very, very risky because they can always just fully charge it and then end up piercing your own counterattack. Such like this. So for uncharged counterattacks, they can be very difficult for trying to beat out. Usually if you're already doing an attack, your opponent's going to realize, oh, you're attacking me with a multi-hit move. I'm going to keep holding my charge until I can attack you safely. Well, a lot of the time those people will want to keep charging, just in case you do decide to attack. This can be very, very bad for them if you are very patient, because you can easily decide to attack them right before they attack you. You don't have counter frames the entire time when you're charging with a thing. There is an opening, so that means you will be able to punish them. There's lots of ways you can end up punishing people for this. In that case right there, that was actually a hype property thing. I'll get into that a bit later. But this giant opening is dependent on each character. Usually it's just right before the uh, the attack is about to come out. But slower counterattacks are going to have more counter frames. So you got to get used to those slower timings and vice versa. The attacks that come out faster are going to have fewer counter frames. So you got to be more ready. And, and you might have to like psych yourself up a bit to be like, oh yeah, I, I can do this. I can, I can beat them out. But it is very scary because if you do it too late, you can easily just get hit right there, or if you do it too soon, you can easily just eat a full uh, critical hit combo. It's risk versus reward, and typically once you get better at it, you can end up getting a lot of more reward off of it. If you want a more simpler thing, and probably what most people even do, honestly, like uh, what I showed there, just beating it out with a normal attack, is for characters who can get a big damaging combo 
from a simple hit. For most characters, you can typically just be like, oh, I see you do that, I'm gonna grab, and I clashed, okay. I, you can usually grab and punish them on reaction. That's the simplest one. And the best part about this variation is that if you do mistime it, you're not gonna eat a critical hit. You're not gonna get full combo. Only fully charged or critical hits are typically what lead to combo routes for counterattacks. So for a quick summary, typically grabs are gonna be a lot better for dealing with these on reaction because you get the critical hit, which will get you some synergy. And in dual phase, you'll get even a knockdown and you can set up for your own opportunities to continue your momentum. For these quick attacks, I would save them if you want to stay in the phase or if you want to risk and go for big damage because you can react very well by getting a slower startup move that would end up getting more damage overall. Slightly more damage from the grab route, but a lot more risk. <laughs> it is a good time to say that when you do hit someone's counterattack, uh, it actually delays their attack very slightly. And it is a good time to also say that for these counterattacks, whenever you do hit a counter, they do end up having to be in a bit of stun. I don't know if you can really see it there between these two of that one and something like this. A sl slight bit longer. So this will allow certain moves that you probably wouldn't think to be safer on counterattacks to actually be safe. It's a bit beneficiary for the opponent who's hitting your counterattack. It also allows them to cancel into other moves, which that goes to my next point. You could do other moves to help you beat out the opponent if you see them about to be fully charged and you already hit their counterattack. Not like a, oh, I did it on reaction thing like I was mentioning before, like, oh, I hit them on reaction and I mistimed it because that would be too late by then. For example, if you were to like barely mistime the actual punish, like you're trying to go for this, but then you end up going for that. Typically for if you do something early like that and you're already hitting their counterattack. Sometimes it can be difficult to react to, but it's always an option you have. You don't always have to take the counterattack. And another thing I could really mention, now of course, you gotta remember your opponent isn't just playing brain dead unless they're playing Libra or Scizor. They are not just gonna always charge up in your face and be like, oh, I hope it hits their block, maybe I'll be plus at worst, or maybe I'll just get hit, maybe I'll just accept my fate. You gotta realize too that in these, you can dash cancel. A lot of the time, at least what I do, <laughs> is that if I see my opponent not really doing anything, and I know they might want to react to me early on, uh, I will counterattack, dash away from them. They sometimes might dash in front of you and try to go for a mix-up, like this. If you still were being patient, or go for other options, like jumping. But most of the time, they are probably going to try to run away, just because that is like the safer option. This timing is varied, so what I'm about to say next is also a bit of a risk, but hey, that's just fighting games, that's uh, it's all about risk. But it's very good for you if you end up getting it, because you can get big punishes uh, quite easily if you realize what your opponent's going to do. So for right here, we're going to have Pikachu go for somewhat charged into a backdash. No blocking, because I totally believe in my ability to time this correctly. <laughs> uh, if you were to block and delay, oh, they're probably going to do something. Uh, you could go for an attack and try to punish the backdash. Now, like I said, timing varies a bit. This could be a bit sooner, this could be a bit later, but the great thing about this is, usually if they do it later into it, you're probably going to punish their backdash because this is also the same time where you might try to go for an attack to try to beat them out. You might not get a crit if you react to it right away, but you can get damage nonetheless. Sometimes you do have to deal with the iframes, and that's just like a poor timing decision, so you typically would like to do attacks that linger a while, and lunge forward to try to punish it. Bone Rush was another great example when I was playing Lucario for that. Going in the shoes of the person actually counterattacking this time, this is a, an example really from my experience fighting Shao Kahn and other top players who can react pretty quickly to CA and punish relatively quickly when it comes up. They'll just be blocking here and they will grab. That is something you might want to get good at if you are conditioning your opponent into trying to backdash away because you are grabbing them a lot of time as they're charging it up. Characters like Pikachu typically would have it rough in these scenarios because it's kind of slow. You see me like punish it like that. But like I mentioned before, the typical, oh, go for a lungy move is also a great option you can do if you have it, such as Blaze Kicks. There's just a bunch of different timings to these and you typically just learn what your opponent in the opponent, like player-player matchup, you typically learn what they're going to do in these scenarios based on what you've done. You know, just basic conditioning. You see them counterattacking your face a lot, you decide to punish them with either an attack or a grab, they're most likely going to try to backdash away if they do go for a counterattack again, or just not even do counterattacks at all. But they start backdashing away a lot, then you got to realize, oh shoot, they're probably not going to actually go through with the attack. Let me try doing a quick attack at some point in the move. And you could do it later in the move, just to be safe. But it's just a nice dink to think that, oh yeah, later CA backdashes are typically going to be around the same time as, oh, this is when I want to punish a counterattack if it's actually going to go all the way through. As another useful tip that kind of relates back to both of these, having attacks that have multiple hits to them, while it will prolong the counter frames and delay 
delay their attack themselves, it's actually super useful because you could accidentally miss time one of the hits, but because it's a multi-hit, then it just ends up going to the rest of it and it may overpower them either way. A good example right here is actually... Some of the hits didn't go through there, but then the rest were able to catch on and punish them anyway. Some attacks may be slower in between the hits, such as right there. Blaze Kick's second hit didn't come out on time. So finding your good, useful moves for dealing with counterattacks may not just be, oh, go for the grab, but also, once you get very good at these, you don't really have to worry too much about having to time it unless you're under stressful situations. But having these moves is still nice in those stressful situations, or, you know, they just might coincidentally also be, like, the best option you can do. Exclusive to field phase for this next point is that you can actually, if you see a single attack, you can perfect block the attack. Perfect blocking is a technique used on single targeting moves in field phase where you are homing attacking and then you press block at the very last second of an attack. You get out of your block state pretty quickly. The timing's pretty generous. That was a pretty late one, I think. Uh, and you'd want to do your fastest moves. So in Blaze Against Place, you'd probably want to try to do something like Blaze Kicks. Uh, homing attack isn't really the best. See how fast I get out of that? Now watch me try to get out of this if I do it like this. That is a lot more time. So you can force opponents from being plus into getting punished and losing the field phase. Now, like I said, this only works for single targeting ones and some counterattacks are multi-hit. You'll just kind of have to respect it unless you go for the things I've mentioned before where you want to risk it, because you could still do that in this case in field phase. But if you want to be more safe, this is another alternative. Should also mention for Machamp mains that submission works like a homing attack. So you have this in dual phase and can actually perfect block in dual phase. It has a little more startup. You're not able to block right away, but it is another thing you can do in dual phase if you want to go for the perfect block. Though, honestly, at that point, you might as well just go for a regular grab. <laughs> a good chunk of the cast has single hitting attacks that you can abuse this from. Most of them actually do have quite a few hits to them. So this isn't really a thing you're going to see too much, such as Garchomp, Charizards, Weavile, Suicune. They all are multi hits. But most notably, you can deal with this for characters just like Empoleon, Aegislash, Libre, I showed Pikachu, Blaziken, many characters still do have it and still all around a very useful thing to have in your head and thinking, oh, I want to punish them in a safer way. <laughs> you do still have to worry about having to deal with their potential early release, in which case you will get counter hit, but it's field phase, so you won't get comboed. You'll just take extra damage and they'll get some synergy because it's a, a critical hit for them. This next point is also somewhat related to single hit versus multi hit uh, counter attacks. In this case, we're going to have Gengar do his counter attack on Oki. And because of the timing of this, because they're doing it perfectly on Oki like this, you can actually be able to backdash. That wasn't a true punish, but it still leaves you in a plus situation most of the time. Now, for multi-hits, this can be very difficult. Some characters like Sceptiles, you can, I think you can still do it on, but a lot of times, such as Machamp right here, I don't even have to show it really much in order for you to see that you are not going to be able to backdash this thing. It's very lingering, multi-hit, and if you do attempt to do it, especially at the wall, which is most of the time where you're going to be doing this, you will eat a lot of damage, such as this <laughs> so not the, not the not the best idea it's more risk versus reward but typically you can decide the risk versus reward a bit because you can t definitely tell when the opponent's counterattack is going to be later now i mentioned they have to time it a specific way you have to do it early on i think most backdashes are typically one to eight frames if you're playing a ghost character you have more iframes on your backdashes it's slower so you might still be minus but you don't have to deal with a counterattack where you might be even more minus if you word block it depends on the character but in situations like this where they try to delay the attack to try to catch the backdash they might sometimes end up accidentally doing it too late and for mid low counter attack starting on frame five you're actually able to jump it perhaps even punish it depending on how much recovery they have for low counter attacks such as mewtwo's uh it's a frame one thing so if they do that okie option on you at all unless they have like some other setup like they typically do in field phase then you can just jump it right away the problem is this is still technically a mix-up because they can always just go from counter attack into a dash grab Gengar's not really the best example you could definitely react to his but other characters you might not be so lucky because they have pretty good dashes and you just might want to respect it so still struggle because faster dashes and you just might have to respect the mix up and just hold block either way but that is just how much you want the risk versus reward do you want to potentially backdash the attack if it's a single hit and try to get out of it or do you see that it's a mid low that is charged up late this jumping tip also applies to opponents who have multi-hitting counter attacks which are still mid lows because those extra hits don't really matter if you're just out of the way of it but you do got to worry about opponents who are going to be dash up grabbing you all the time thinking that you're probably going to try to backdash or they could just simply just forward dash forward react to you jumping and perhaps even go for an anti-air it's not 100 percent safe but it's mostly because they're doing a dash and not the actual counterattack itself so that's just a way to typically beat counterattacks on okies and going back to that rule of mid lows being able to be jumped over starting at frame five this same point applies to situations where oh do i want to beat it out like normal 
or do with a grab. You can also just always go for a jump, and that is a safe way of being able to beat it out. You can do it early like I did, or you can just do it pretty much late. Do note that most of the time your attack is going to be delayed a lot compared to the other options that I've shown. And because of that, if your opponent was to do a dash cancel, you're probably at worst because Nero going to be resetting a neutral. Or if they decide to go forward and want to be a little risky, they could anti-air you, but I feel like most of the time you would be safe. And as an extra tidbit that makes this scenario a little weirder than the other two scenarios, is that you're letting your opponent go through with the entire attack. That includes how they move. Now Garchomp, he's typically fine, he doesn't move too much, he crossed me up there, but characters like Libre go pretty far, Shen Mewtwo goes pretty far, so that can make it a bit weird, you might want to jump backward a bit to accommodate, and it actually is a little safer in case they were to backdash or forward dash forward, as opposed to backdashing forward, anyway. <laughs> so, you can, you're able to punish them with relative ease if they were to let go, and you have plenty of time to do so, like, it's just a 5 frame window as opposed to the usual startup of grabs and fastest attacks in the game being frame 11, so it's more lenient, and has another benefit to it. Be aware of any counterattacks that are mids or higher, because jumping it may be more difficult. Something like Machamps is always going to catch you, no matter how tr you try to jump. Some characters do have options in the air that might help them, such as uh, Ghost Permeation from Gengar, but typically you might be unlucky, and you might want to try hitting it out, or abuse their height properties, which is another thing I'll mention in just a moment. The only exception to that high rule is Blaziken's, and that's just because Blaziken's counterattack sucks. <laughs> it's technically a high, but it just kind of hits at like the same height as like any other like mid low or mid but the one benefit to it i guess is that you can't jump it like five frames before like a mid low now off to the height property thing i've already mentioned lows being frame one jumpable and mid lows being frame five jumpable now what about highs and mid highs well those two are relatively rare among the cast the only mid highs off the top of my head are shadow Mewtwo two and Aegislash, slash while machamp Blaziken, while well, Machamp, Blaziken, and Scizor are the main highs that I really remember <laughs> all the time, these have their own disadvantages because they're not mids. A mid high like Shadow Mewtwo's can be anti air quite easily. Even if your attack is out, you are going to get hit by this anti air attack. Many other attacks besides just 8Ys possess this mid high invulnerability, but 8Y is usually the one you'd want to use in that scenario if you are too scared of using the typical stuff I've mentioned before. Now, for highs, this one's actually quite easy. You just have to duck. If your character has a low stance, that is frame 1 invulnerable, which I mean to not be in the case right here, <laughs> then you are able to just duck and punish them. But even for characters like Shadow Mewtwo, every character in this game has a 2x that is immune to highs. And most characters also have a 2y that's immune to highs, so that is a safer move. The two that don't, off the top of my head, are Mewtwo and Blaziken, but for Shadow Mewtwo right here, I don't know what makes it different, but yeah, that one's immune to highs. <laughs> and for the 2x follow-up as before, that was pretty late into it, frame 1 invulnerable. And that's just how dumb Machamp CA is. <laughs> it's a dumb CA, but if you react to it on time, then it's a lot less dumb. And that's typically what it's like for characters with high CAs. Minus Blaziken. Blaziken's might as well just be a mid-low. <laughs> and while we're here, why don't we talk about piercing? Because I've mentioned before, piercing is another thing you could do for dealing with counterattack. A lot of the time, they usually take a bunch of startup, and so that makes them unreliable. But you can use these when your opponent is waking up on their own and you have your Oki. You could force them to not want to go through with their counterattack because you'll just pierce. What will happen? Because now you're on the other receiving end of using a counterattack, they're probably going to do all the stuff I mentioned, <laughs> depending on the counterattack of, oh, do I backdash? Do I do this other stuff? But there's other moves, of course, that you have that can pierce that isn't just a fully charged counterattack. And what makes this more dangerous is that you can delay your counterattack or other piercing option so that they think, oh, I can't, I'm not reacting to the startup of it. You could very well just do something like this and try to bait them into doing a counterattack. Very good traits for characters who have a lot of piercing options, such as someone like Sceptiles or Shadow Mewtwo's in this case. The best way of putting this is that you're just baiting them into going for a counterattack because they're not seeing you do a piercing option right away. And speaking of options, as if this entire video hasn't been about options to beat counterattacks, let us discuss many character-specific ways you can deal with counterattacks. I have mentioned multi-hitting attacks being extremely useful for trying to beat out counterattacks. This also applies for if you were to hit an opponent with something, and then you cancel into a Pokemon attack. For example, going from someone's 5Y, like Decidueyes, into a multi-hitting strike. This applies to Bone Rush, this applies to Blaze Kicks, I've already mentioned that before, but there's plenty more character-specific multi-hit options you could go into. Not all characters are this lucky to have something, but a lot of characters also have a DP, which may also be a good option to do. At worst case scenario, it's a Pierce, and if it's a Pierce, that means it's not a critical hit which also means less damage and they don't get synergy. So that is the worst case scenario. If you do realize later into the move, oh shoot, I'm hitting their counterattack. Such as there, that's a pretty late one. 
This situation is pretty lucky to have a multi-hitting attack like that as his 5 hub Y. So there's a bunch of different things you can do. I would experiment on what you, options you have for dealing with counterattacks. Every character does have their own, like it comes out at a certain time. So they have either more or less counter frames. But typically once you recognize how fast each character's counterattack is, you'll know how much time you have for dealing with them. And like I said, worst case scenario, you just go into a any counterattack really. Most characters have a counterattack. Uh, CA that they could go into to prevent a critical hit from happening. Now, if you want to be a bit spicy and you're playing a ghost character, I've already mentioned, oh yeah, I can backdash it be a little more safe so I don't have to time it correctly. You can also do the same just on reaction if you feel like it. This situation right here has a fast forward dash that's a ghost dash. Can be a bit hard to time, but there's an easier way of timing it. If you're already doing a counterattack, since you don't have to just press forward twice in order to do it, you could just be pressing it once to dodge the attack if you're already in the counterattack. And this is something I haven't mentioned yet, which is in these scenarios where you're fighting someone who is using their counterattack and you also decide to use their counterattack, it's very tricky because there's so many different ways you can get out of the scenario as the winner. You can either fully charge and realize, oh, I'm in the, I did it first, so that means I'll pierce them. But then you gotta realize your opponent might let go of their counterattack early and try to hit you out that way. It won't be a pierce, but you'll be safe from a fully charged counterattack. And then you always gotta realize, oh shoot, they could also back away which a lot of time I've been in scenarios where both of us just back away, which is funny. <laughs> then you also got to realize, oh shoot, they could let it go even earlier if they realize it and try to hit them. But then if they let it go early, then they could just keep charging and then you get fully charged counterattack. It's, it, it, it just, it's very weird. <laughs> I, I'm not doing another take of that. It's just so much of that. I apologize if I'm being a bit stuttery right now, but there is a lot that can go on in counterattack scenarios like this. Counterattack possessing multi-hits is also just extremely useful in this situation since one, a lot of characters who have it are pretty quick for some reason. Two, you'll be able to be out the counterattacks more easily if you were to time it. So just like that. Or three, it makes your opponent scared to try to backdash because they get, could get caught by another hit that's lingering more. Or they just end up getting hit because they let go of the CA too early anyway. <laughs> this situation's pretty dire all around. I don't think anyone wins in this scenario, but if you have a multi-hit attack, at the very least, you're a bit safer because you can afford to let go a bit early. No one wins though. We all lose. I do want to specify specific situations about height properties though because a lot of characters actually do have frame one in vulnerable moves a lot of anti-airs aren't actually frame one high or mid-high immune so you do have to slightly time it in those scenarios i mentioned for wanting to anti-air mid highs or highs of course you could just low stance that's frame one but for other characters like chandler her frame one anti-air is a frame one anti-air so against someone like blaze again if you see them doing this counterattack that is definitely a high and not a mid-low at all, I swear. Like, look at this thing. <laughs> you are most likely, if you just press the button at the last second, even, you are going to be able to hit them through. This scenario is also a thing for lows when it comes to someone like Mewtwo. His low is going to be able to get hopped over by any jumps, but also certain characters have options that make them low immune frame one, whether that is also Shandy's up stance or a character like Weavile and his 8x. Now this is for my characters only because my character is dumb when it comes to dealing with counterattacks in the best way possible. So if you're playing Sceptile, pro tip Sceptile players, you have all the options in the world that I mentioned before. You can jump. Sceptiles like to jump a lot. Well, guess what? If you're in the middle of an attack, not only can you just beat it out, but if you were to mistime it, which I'm failing to do for some reason, you can also just press <laughs> bullet seat hop and hop over the attack. This will hop over most mid lows and lows. I think actually probably all of them can be more difficult against mid highs and highs and some mids. But typically you have a lot of leeway when it comes to this and you can just straight up punish them into a full combo. And real quick, cause I did mention the whole, oh, go into a counter. So at the very least you only get pierced and not critical hit. They're very, very useful in not only just those scenarios, but scenarios where your opponent wants to let go of their counter attack early. Why would they want to do that? Well, they want to punish you as fast as they can if they see you hitting their counter. This is a situation that happens a lot and a lot of characters have ways for going into their counter attacks that are frame one, such as well, any DP like Lucario's, Deciduize, but not just DP's, because characters like Sceptile have stuff like Detect and we've all has Taunt, but even characters who don't have frame one counterattacks, if you just do it at the right time and are still pretty early, just not frame one, such as like Garchomp. Garchomp especially can be very devastating if they're in the corner when they want to do a counterattack because then it just flip flops the whole momentum like what a DP would do or in Garchomp's case, just all the damage you're going to have to take in the corner now. Minimizing damage by using a counter hit isn't the only good use of this. You can actually just fully flip the tables on them. Now let's talk supports because supports are also incredibly useful for this. Fennekin and Umbreon both are frame one full in vulnerability. So you can use these on wake up if you see your opponent counterattacking. And for Umbreon in particular, it's also pretty fast. I would recommend Umbreon over Fennekin. 
uh, unless you have a specific reason for using Fennekin. Because it's so fast, it, it just makes it a lot easier to actually hit the opponent and not just make them back up. Because Fennekin is so slow that they could probably just dash cancel and then dash away <laughs> and get out of Fennekin's way, which is good if you want to create space. I guess you could find that as a reason, but Umbreon also just creates space if you just hit it with all the other benefits of actually doing damage in those scenarios and the debuff and the synergy steal. And it can be really done at any time because of this frame one. You can do it as early as you see blue or you want to do it super late because you're a bit afraid and then you want to notice that they're actually going to go through with the entire thing. But you can also typically do other supports that can pierce such as a Veltal or Reshiram or really just any support if you want to time it right because in the worst case scenario, you're just going to be trying with the opponent. Now, you do have to time it in a specific way. It's not like they get summoned on frame one. There's been plenty of scenarios where you'll call something and then you get hit and the call just doesn't come out at all. Scenarios where Umbreon would work, as an example, I guess is the best way of putting it. But for stuff like Eveltal, if you just do it early on, such as like, oh, I see the blue in the animation, then you can call it. And if it's a big ranged one like Eveltal's, you're mostly go likely going to catch them, even if they try to backdash away. They do a lot more damage than someone like Umbreon's. And typically for someone like Eveltal, you also get a better debuff. It really depends on the support. Lapras is also pretty good, well, a bit slower when it comes to rushing the opponent down. Think of these as I want to hit my opponent with an attack, like I would with just trying to time it when they're not having their counter frames, but I don't want to be punished as harshly if I were to get it wrong. Now, I mentioned the worst case scenario being you trade, but those trades are because your opponent would most likely hit you first. In those scenarios, be aware of phase shift points, because if they do get a phase shift off that counter attack hit, then the support just goes away and then you just get hit. You might as well have just gotten hit there, but you also just wasted your support and you have to wait for it to charge up again. If it can even be charged again, like Reshiram and Eveltal would just only be one per round and you just wasted that use for that round. So be mindful of phase shift points. This next one's gonna sound super, super lame, but you're just gonna have to deal with it. When it comes to DPs, I wanna talk about character specific counter attacks. For this, DPs. <laughs> Not every character has a DP which makes them character specific, fun fact, <laughs> but the best way of dealing with them is to simply just hold the R button. Hold the R to not hold that L, because if you hold that R button, all DPs are punishable on block. I get it too, we've all, I, this is very boring. <laughs> it's just a very boring one, but I want to cover all my bases, you know? So if you just grab punish them, you are going to grab punish them. Fun fact, I'm not going to re-record this. I don't care how bad it sounds. <laughs> all you got to do is just grab punish them. That's simple. I'm mashing here. Wow, that was a punish. You block the DP. Now, for the real though, that just means you have to be a little more patient sometimes if you want on your opponent's Oki, or just like in neutral if you think they're going to do some whack move for some reason. But DPs are, you know, typically used on Oki opportunities. And if you want to be patient for that, you can. You could, of course, do the whole other scenarios of, hey, I hit your DP, let me ca cancel into another move. But you would have to time it in a very, very specific way because typically most of them are also pretty fast. Libre's here isn't really the fastest. Now, someone like Lucario's is frame 11, so now let's get a little spicy here. Not only are we just talking about DPs, but we're also talking about other frame 1 moves, such as moves that can only be activated if you hit them. This isn't as exciting as I'm making it sound, actually, because, well, there's lots of ways you can deal with these moves, actually. Not just be patient and be like, oh, I see it. Okay, time to get the grab punish. Weavile's is the most notorious of these, along with Septile's Detect. For situations like Weavile's where, oh, yeah, you're, they're moving around. Most of them are going to have to move around a lot of the time, like Septile's. You not only can just be patient and try to punish them, uh, but you can also just predict their movement patterns. And if they decide to go for the attack follow up for someone like Weavile, you can end up doing that. Weavile can cancel into a non-attack, and it's just completely safe. And Septile can always be covered by the Poison Cloud. But there's different ways of dealing with this. I recommend trying them out. I'm not going to really mention them all. But there's more than just, oh, I hit them and then I, I just die because of it. Like, like I mentioned before with all the other counter attacks. You don't just hit them and then you just die. You could do that if it, depending on the move. But if you were safe like this, you have plenty of time to really move. You can just block it even. I just want to show Weavals in particular because, like I said, it's the most notorious one of them. And there's just multiple ways you could do to deal with it. At the very least, just avoid damage altogether. Usually, though, it's just kind of like a DP. You want to kind of predict it and if it works out then you get to punish them heck you can even punish them because they're so minus you can just punish them with anything you really want this and for dps i don't know why i forgot this just go for oh i don't know just any big button that's a combo starter because there's so much end lag to them sometimes just a bit tricky though because he can still disappear and that's what makes it especially dumb <laughs> compared to other dp like frame one. Oh wow i didn't hit them well i got a wait move because he could still go through with the follow-up it doesn't have the attack but he could still disappear and then punish you if you mistime your thing and i guess that's a very important thing to mention for septile in particular so for character specifics we have dps we have moves that can only be done when you activate them but there's lots and lots of different types of counters and it would take me forever to try to really go through all of them but you could think of these counter attacks as usually they will be punishable on lock like Septile and his Leaf Blade, or they might have a height property thing like Charizard and his Fire Punch. 
I really, really don't want to go through all these. I apologize. But there's just a lot of counterattacks in this game. Chandler's is pretty dumb, though. I will admit. Be aware of that one. <laughs> Smog is dumb. We hate Smog in this household. Special mention the breaks in two because hers also deletes projectiles in light screen. So that is a very unique thing about it. I haven't really talked about projectiles too much because this video is typically about just being close quarters with the opponent, but it's very important either way. So I might as well just mention it here now that we're on the breaks and topic who will just avoid <laughs> projectiles because she's bracing. You can use projectiles to try to bait people into counterattacking them. Weird way of putting it, but a lot of time characters will want to counterattack projectiles to absorb them and get meter. You can sometimes set them up in a way to where you can go to a piercing option or some other option that they wouldn't like. For example, I guess the best way of just describing it would be Chandelier shooting fireballs and then going into her charged piercing laser. Lots of characters have stuff like that that they can abuse for dealing with counterattacks. And a lot of time, those people who are absorbing counterattacks are going to dash away. So that kind of goes back to my deal with, oh, you think they're gonna dash away? Try to attack them at this point. It's just use more projectiles. That's the typical thing you would see in field phase at the very least, but a lot of the characters also have this type of stuff in dual phase as well. Especially Chandelure with her plethora of projectiles that I really wish she did not have. Why does the zoner have projectiles? Now, the last thing I want to talk about today for dealing with counterattacks is one that's very hard to deal with, uh, and those are burst attacks that have frame one counter armor. There are five characters in this game with that uh, trait being Sceptile, Chandelure, Weavile, Suicune, and Aegislash when he's in his shield mode. Now, I'm gonna go through these one at a time. For Sceptile, his is very slow. It's the slowest of them uh, when it comes to giving him uh, invincibility. This can be abused, not really on reaction, but if in scenarios where you might not be able to punch the others because you grab too late, and it's just a, uh, oh, that sucks because they went into their invincibility, that's probably gonna work on Sceptile because Sceptile is, uh, yeah, it, like I said, it's very slow. Another way you could take advantage of this is of the property that hitting them in their counterattack state prolongs how long it takes for the actual attack to come out. This mostly comes in terms to projectile attacks. If you are far away, while Sceptile will rush all the way down, you might be safe a lot of the time because he has to go through the extra few frames of having to be hit by the counterattack as he's starting up his burst attack. And well, I already mentioned it takes a while for him to get his invincibility, so that means there's a long window for him to get hit by projectiles, which just means there's a longer window if it's a longer multi-hit projectile for you to just block after you shoot it. Now, it's not a bad situation for him. Uh, you might be able to jump it on time, actually, <laughs> because it takes a long while for him to get full screen with it. Chandler's is the most basic. It kind of goes at a decent range, but it's not like a full screen thing, but it's also not like super short. Like another character I'm going to mention, Gremlin. So this is really much I can't really say. It's a mid-low. You can jump it on time if you were jumping already. But that takes a lot of guessing. And that's really most of what you'd have to deal with these counterattacks. It's just a lot of guessing. Like, will they do it here? Will they do it on wake up? Will they not do it on wake up? Will they save it and just do it out randomly when they see you press anything? Will they do it when they see you doing your own counterattack and be like, oh yeah, I could just do it so because it's so free and I can just punish you. There's a lot that goes into it. That said, because they can do it on wake up and it is frame one, kind of treat it like a DP if you want to be safe or you can just go for a piercing move, not do the scenario I mentioned where you delay your piercing move in case you accidentally mistime it and then eat a full punish because that would be bad. That would be, that, that, that'd be unhealthy for your health. Next up, which I, you know, I just realized that all four of them are like lined up right next to each other. And then we just have Aegis Slash in the corner right here, like a little little dummy because he has half a burst attack that has CA frames. Anyway, Suicune's over here. Suicune's is unique. Suicune's is the only one that gets powered up and faster if you actually hit the counter frames. If you hit it, you're going to die. And it goes pretty far. So projectiles too, not gonna be helpful at all. You could get away with shooting projectiles against Chandelure and Sceptile, though Chandelure's also a zoner, so that's kind of hard to do. Anyway, Suicune, so you don't want to do it because it doesn't go entirely full screen, but even from like kind of far mid screen, you can get caught by this. And if you hit the thing, you're going to get hard, hard punished. Knowing this, I would be more patient around Suicune from these ranges, unless you have piercing options for far away, like if you're playing Chandelure. Next, we have Weavile, which is uh, gonna say right now, very stupid. Frame 11, steal synergy. Uh, I'm going to say this right now, it's like it's also frame 11, don't want to forget that for later, but we file, it just hits so high up, and because it hits so high up, you can't really jump it. It doesn't hit very far, but the fact that we file could pressure you at the corner, or any scenario where you want to be in the air and cross them up, also very stupid to deal with when he can go into agility and then cancel that into burst, so he can travel pretty far, so you don't even have to be right next to him. And in that case, I guess his burst attack has good range that he can always do that. But it's just so hard to get out of the corner against him. So I would mostly play grounded and you just kind of have to be forced to guess if he's going to grab or attack at various points throughout his entire synergy burst. It's not like you can attack while you're landing on the ground and hope they mistime it because, you know, counter armor. The only way to avoid that counter armor is if you had an air 
grabbing attack or an air piercing attack. And I think the only air <laughs> grabbing attack when you're mid-air is Machamps. And I don't think you're really going to have enough time to do that because you have to wait until you're super low to the ground. And this is turning into more of a rant. <laughs> but <laughs> And you can't do piercing options because most of them are like dive kicks that you charge up. So he has plenty of time to just go into his burst. So I guess the best way of dealing with this move is... uh. Just be patient. <laughs> just take the grab. Worst case scenario, just take the grab. It's Revel grab. It doesn't do much damage. And as for Aegis Slash, his is probably the most easiest to deal with. Despite being frame 11, that's mostly just because he has to go into, into his shield mode. His shield mode all around already has counter frames on like lots of his moves. So you are already playing in the playstyle of, oh, I don't want to really fire an option at him in case he goes for something like Flash Cannon. And it doesn't even go in the air. So if you're in the air, you can play safe. Though, of course, shield mode has an air anti-air thing that's also full screen, so be aware of that. But otherwise, I feel like this one is very tame compared to the others. It's just full screen and will activate from full screen, unlike subtitles. So, yeah, it's just mostly a lot of be aware, guys, be aware. But, yeah, that's basically a lot of the different scenarios for you to deal with counterattacks in this game. I hope this video is very helpful. I know it's a lot to really think about at all times, but you gotta remember, I mentioned character-specific stuff. Not all characters are going to have a DP. Not all characters can have a burst attack that has counter armor on it. You can really limit your mindset per matchup for what you need to focus on, because only one character has one counterattack. You could just be like, oh, I'm fighting with Champ. All right, well, his counterattack is a high, so I could just duck it whenever I see it. Or his scary face, which is also counter armor, is not going to be used too much because it's a charge move. And he typically has other stuff he's trying to go for. These seem complicated, but they're actually quite simple once you get to know Pokin's mechanics a bit. Pokin really has a good counterattack mechanic system that I really like. It can be seem very oppressive to a lot of people who just want to press buttons. And are like, oh, I'm getting punished because my opponent's in pressure and they're minus. And they just do a counterattack and now they just changed it tables on me like every character has a dp that could combo and is safe on block that could be very very difficult for a lot of newcomers to deal with but i think in my opinion that the system is very good and there's just some counter attacks that could be a bit overtuned septile but a lot of time there are options to dealing with most of them whether that's just beating them out before they come out by being a very brave person or dealing with high properties or any of the other stuff i mentioned so i definitely hope this video helped all of you out if you want to see more poking content feel free to subscribe and all that other stuff i feel bad for chilling but that's what you got to do i guess nowadays so see you guys next time for more poking content